Hey guys, Kingpin here. Welcome to the next episode of Franchise Mode. In case you missed the last episode, we made a taper and capybara enclosure, which I thought was good, but apparently they're stressed for some reason. Oh, their social group is too large. Probably should have known that since we went over how they're solitary animals in the last episode. Maybe we'll make them a separate enclosure and just keep a couple of them in here for the cappies. That'll be a later problem, though. They're still above 80% wellness. Let's check out our other animals. Our sea lions are usually pretty self-sustaining. They've never had an illness or any serious issue at all. They're the animals that we started with, and while I wouldn't really recommend starting with them since it costs a lot to feed them and they are pretty expensive, it worked out for us. Definitely not a beginner-friendly animal, especially if you've never played the game before, but well worth it if you have some experience. On the other hand, flamingos are very beginner-friendly. This exhibit was really easy to set up. They're cheap to purchase, sell for a decent amount for conservation credits, and they breed like crazy. If you weren't paying attention in the intro, off camera I made this little food court zone. I decided to call it the Cappy Cafe, since it's right across from our Cappy Bars, which as of right now are one of our more popular exhibits. But apparently it doesn't have power. I don't know how I possibly could have overlooked that. We're gonna need to get a generator in here so we can power these food places. We have plenty of beginner-friendly animals in this zoo, and we're easily making a profit. But we're gonna need to start getting rid of some of our animals to get conservation credits so we can get some bigger game like elephants or rhinos into the zoo. Not looking like we can sell much right now, but we should be able to before long. Our cappies will breed like crazy. I laid the very crude foundation in water, but I'm gonna make this our next habitat, and it's gonna be for the speckled caiman. We'll talk more about them when we're getting the exhibit built, but for now this is the rough outline of it. They're very similar to crocodiles and alligators, if you know much about them. First, we're going to need to get some power over here, though. And probably another water treatment plant, because the caimans are going to need lots of water. Spectacled caimans can be found in many regions where capybaras can. This is because, like we said in the last episode, capybaras are a main prey source of the caiman. But let's backtrack a little bit. Not everybody even knows what a caiman is. Caimans are crocodilian which means they're extremely closely related to crocodiles and alligators, which are extremely well-known animals. Something they all have in common is they need to be around water to thrive. All crocodilian, including caiman, are ambush predators, which means they'll sit at the water's edge and wait for an animal to jump in or take a drink and then strike when they're not expecting it. This is why all of their eyes are located on the tops of their head, and their nostrils are too, so they can sit, barely visible, and be able to see and breathe while watching their prey take a drink they can then find the opportune time to strike. Spectacled caimans are smaller than alligators and crocodiles, but black caimans can get quite large. I hope you guys enjoy those educational segments of this series. It's one of my favorite parts about it. Entertainment's fun and all, but it's nice to be able to be entertained and learn something. We're slowly gaining a decent amount of animals in our inventory. Where are these caimans? We have lots of North America animals, which is going to be the next section of the zoo we make. Unfortunately, we don't have a female yet. We're going to need to find one in the animal market. But we used a few conservation credits. I think it only cost 50 or 60, which was cheap, for a gold star caiman. So hopefully its genes will be good and pass them down to its mates. Offspring, I mean. Pass down its genes to its offspring with its mates. Caimans aren't so expensive in this game. Let's see if we can't find anything good. We're going to sort by cheapest, so they should be down here. And it looks like there's a couple females right there, which is exactly what we wanted. None on this side. An albino peafowl, that's pretty cool. Male pronghorns are kind of rare to come by, but we already have one, and they breed good too. So let's just get a single female. Hopefully that'll lead to many hatchlings, and with our gold star rated one too. Certainly one of the smaller exhibits we've made so far, but I really like it. We've made a ton of big exhibits. N not every exhibit in the zoo can be huge and have cohabitation or have underwater viewing. Sometimes you just need to have a basic exhibit. No elevation, 
just for an easy animal to take care of. Hopefully that's what our caimans are, and they're not too much trouble. Why are some of my blueprints blacked out? Or whited out in this case, or even locked? It would be one thing if they were all the ones I got from the workshop, like this one, which is our speaker and billboard sign, but some of these I made myself and they're currently locked out. That's bizarre, but we can duplicate it somehow, so I don't know. If you guys know why this is happening, let me know in the comments below. Never seen it before. For the first time, we actually had the exhibit pretty much perfect right off the bat. Obviously, we don't have any plants, but the terrain was really good. They just needed a few more areas of rock and soil, and a little bit less grass. We also didn't make the water quite deep enough, because it wasn't deep enough to have the fish feeder for them. Just like in real life, in Planet Zoo, reptiles don't need a whole lot of enrichment. I've made exhibits for alligators before, so I wasn't at all surprised that caimans also don't need a whole lot of enrichment, whether it's food or entertainment. This exhibit is pretty big for them, despite not being a big exhibit compared to what we've made, so I added a little bit of extra enrichment in preparation for the hatchlings, so we don't have to come back. Cayman hatchlings can come in groups of three or four, so we're going to need a lot of extra enrichment for them, because hopefully we have enough for seven or eight caimans total in here. The plant life is going to mimic the capybara exhibit. Caymans and cappies and tapers all live in the Amazon rainforest in South America, so it makes sense that the plant life looks pretty similar. Feel free to skip to 749 if you don't want to watch the time lapse, but if you do, I hope you enjoy. And we finish the exhibit, and there's immediately fighting for alpha status. I wonder why that is. It's probably because they're both males. Some animals in this game only like to be one male per exhibit, and they can have as many females as they want. I'm guessing caimans are like that. We can check the Zoopedia to make sure. We can easily fix this by putting the lesser male, the one who's not Gold Star, in storage and just replace him with the female. Then, if our gold star ever dies or something ever happens to him, we can replace him with the one in storage. Animals in storage luckily don't age, so they're pretty much just stuck in inventory status for you. Check it out, we have another sea lion cub. This one's named Charlie. Another reason I like California sea lions for starting is because the ones that are gold star, like our original Penelope, I say original because if you missed episode 2, we have two Penelopes somehow. But the gold stars you can keep, and the sea lions have shockingly long lifespans. But if they're not gold star, you can get rid of them and send them back to the wild, and then you'll get a lot of conservation credits from your starting animals. It's certainly not easy. Remember, we had to take out a pretty big loan, but luckily we paid it off. This caiman exhibit turned out really nice. It looks like it's just pulled out of the cappy exhibit, but luckily they're not living together, because this thing could do some damage to a capybara. Like I mentioned before, if you've never heard of a caiman, I'm sure you can see the resemblance between alligators, caimans, crocodiles, and any other crocodilian. Watch him go in the water, if he doesn't clip through this lily pad. And he's clipping through the lily pad. But see how his nose and his eyes hover above the water? In the real Amazon, this water is going to be dark green and murky, so they'll still be able to see the cappies drinking from the water's edge and be able to ambush them. Caiman also eat fish... Monkeys, birds, even turtles, whatever they can get their teeth on and swallow. There's only a few predators in the Amazon that can take down a caiman, mainly jaguars and anacondas. 
Our vets have been researching really effectively. The California sea lion is about maxed out now. So is the flamingo. Our education rating is consistently at one star, so we're gonna need to research our other animals to get the education bonus. They're pretty tough to get, but there's multiple per animal. We haven't even started researching on tapirs, cappies, or caiman, which are our three newest animals. We should probably upgrade this level of all of our staff, because they're only level one yet. It's gonna cost a little more, but the zoo is really making a profit now. We have over 50 grand, and we started with 40. Eventually I want to mess around with work zones. That makes the zoo run more efficiently, but I haven't really used them ever. I might replay that campaign mission where you're supposed to do them off screen, just so I can get a better understanding. If you could let me know in the comments if you use work zones, that'd be great. Are they a waste of time? Are they really worth it? I honestly don't know, but it's a pretty big feature, so I'm guessing they're worth it. You can also have your mechanics research things. And in the last zoo, I had them research shelters, New World, and a few things, so I haven't really needed them in this one, but they're here if we need them. For now, I think we'll leave them on standby. We have a few pretty dangerous animals and only two mechanics, so we're going to need to keep their exhibits locked up and safe. Mechanics can repair the barriers to stop them from escaping. We're almost done putting a little concrete trim around, but then I realized our capybara is doing very bad. How do you have 0% hard shelter? And you don't have enough space? What's going on? This is bizarre. Where are your traversable areas? You can only go here. That's strange. If I had to guess it was a baby... Yeah, look, the babies can get down, but the adults can't. So I'm guessing if a baby goes up there and matures, it won't be able to get back down. So we're going to have to change that. Good we figured this out now. This should be an easy fix. It looks like over by the hard shelter, we can smooth it down a little bit and let the cappies be able to climb. I think the tapers can get up here fine. I'm guessing this area right here was slightly too steep. So let's just use our smooth terrain tool and make it a little smoother for them. Where there's long grass, that's how you know it's working. It automatically defaults to long grass. Let's check if it works. He's running towards it already. Yep, they can get down now. So hopefully his habitat is much better. Now our caimans are having problems. What's wrong with you guys? It said they weren't at their ideal temperature. It's only 43 right now. It looks like the winter's coming a little bit early. And by early, I mean it's July 14th. That is pretty early. That should be another easy fix, though. We're just going to need to give them a water temperature regulator. It's in facilities. I haven't had to use one in any zoo yet, so I'm not sure how they work. But I think it's this building right here, this orange one. We'll put it over here so the guests don't get bothered by it, just like the other two facilities. Hopefully that worked. But now what's wrong? It looks like our sea lions are having problems too. What could possibly be wrong with these guys? Space? I think this means winter is coming, which is surprising because it is still July, and there's the snow. Okay, now every single animal in our zoo seems to be unhappy. We need to give them heaters. For some reason in this game, snow counts as a terrain option, even though you're not placing it. So now our sea lions have 0% sand, which is what they like, and they're all unhappy. And of course, here come the protesters. This isn't good. Even though our zoo is making a profit now, protesters are going to really hurt us, and I don't think we have any animal that likes snow. We have South American animals and animals that live in the California coast in Africa. So we're going to need heaters if we don't already have them. I'm pretty sure the only exhibit we put heaters in, I think was the flamingos. I don't think heaters bother the guests, so we could have the heaters running even if it's the summertime. But right now it is August and 30 degrees. So this is, I don't know if this is the climate change people are talking about or what, but this isn't good. We just have to get these protesters out of here. All they do is make negative impact on the other guests. But it looks like the heaters are getting rid of the snow. And somehow, during this crisis, guests still think the tickets are underpriced. So that's one good thing, I guess. Our zoo's reputation is almost at three and a half stars. That's really good. We just have to get our marketing up. It looks like the sea lions are doing better. Hopefully we can get to another exhibit soon, but the sea lions are chilling for now. It looks like our cappies and tapers aren't too happy, even though we just made them this new cave. 
If we don't get these protesters out of here soon, they're gonna kill our profits and kill the zoo. So I don't know what they're fighting for. We just need to get some heaters in here and hopefully they'll go away. Alright, heaters have been placed. Hopefully they're all happy now. And it looks like they are. That's good. Crisis averted. I think all the protesters are gone too. Luckily the zoo didn't take too big of a financial hit. And hey, we got some research done for our flamingos. I think they're done. Yeah, we got all of the education bonuses except one, so we have one more research to do on them, and then we can have our tapers and cappies getting leveled up. It looks like our cappies doing really good exhibit-wise. Our sea lions are doing good. I'm pretty sure we can move on and do something else now. What could possibly be wrong? How are there still protesters here? Go away! Does it say who they're protesting? Every single cappy is 100% fine. At least Penelope, our golden sea lion, is expecting offspring. Maybe we'll get to test our theory and see if gold genes pass down. One problem I have with Planet Zoo is that there are so many animals in a zoo at once, and we only have like five exhibits. It's a little bit tough to manage everything, including births. I think I just saw that we had a baby taper. Yeah, right there. And I had no clue. He was born 0.2 years ago. I think it's just because the game's new. I just have to keep getting used to it. There's a lot of stuff to manage. Animals will only breed in this game if they're happy, though. And we have a ton of different babies, so all of our animals must be happy at least sometimes. When it's not snowing in July. We should probably do a quick check of all of our animals and see what we even have at this point. It looks like we have four tapers, a handful of sea lions, look at all of them. And how many cappies do we have? Lots. And we bought these guys in the exhibits. We should have a ton of flamingos. The entire reason we started with flamingos is so they'd breed a lot. And it looks like we had caiman babies? When did that happen? I didn't notice. All four of them are the exact same age, so they must have been born at the same time. But we even have a silver one. That's really good. Maybe the gold genes do pass down and gold animals breed better rated. Check her out though. This is our first silver caiman. Hopefully there's more to come. And this one, like her father, also likes to clip through lily pads. I've spent a little bit of time making sure all of our animals are about 100% good, or at least 95% plus. That's the target I shoot for. We have a lot of animals. Keeping 100% the entire time is unrealistic. But look at all of our caiman babies. They're so cute. I just wouldn't want to be in the water with them when they're hungry. The animal models in this game are really something special. Every single one had so much care and effort put into it. From animals like caimans all the way to the most important ones like elephants. This game's awesome. I can't think of the last time I was so excited for a game and wasn't let down in the slightest. This game is exactly what I hoped it was, and more. Right behind the Cappy Cafe, I noticed we have this big plot of land that's not big enough for a huge exhibit, but for a small starter animal I think it would be perfect. Every single video of Planet Zoo I watched before the game came out, it said there were three animals that were good to start with. Flamingos are one of them, we already have them. Nile monitors, which are a lizard native to Africa, was a second good option. But any of the two species of giant tortoise are a really good starting animal. So we're going to add that right here. The Galapagos giant tortoise lives off the western coast of South America, on the Galapagos Islands. They can get extremely big and heavy. Some can weigh up to 300 pounds. The reason for this is because there's no land predators in the Galapagos Islands that can kill them. So they can pretty much just sit there, do nothing all day, and have no threat. Turtles aren't the smartest creatures. They don't thrive where there's active land predators. That's why you don't see any tortoises on the plains of Africa, for example. Stuff like crocodile, lions, or even hippos could easily rip apart a tortoise. So that's why on the Galapagos Islands, they can get so large. Where there's no competition, they can have all the resources for themselves and get as big as they want without threat of dying. This is why evolution ends up happening in the animal kingdom. Say a predator did end up dropping on the Galapagos Islands, an invasive species perhaps. The turtles would then have to evolve traits to combat them. There are better animals that are examples of this later on in the game, and we'll get to it for sure. It's a complex subject. I probably should have checked before doing all this if the turtles could escape, and it looks like they can't. 
I know tortoises in real life can burrow really well. Matter of fact, I was actually at the Columbus Zoo one time and there was a tortoise that escaped. It just straight up dug underneath its fence. Just like caimans, tortoises are reptiles, so I don't think they're going to need a whole lot of enrichment. We can just give them a few blocks of frozen fruit, a heater, and maybe some balls or toys, and then they'll be happy. They're not going to need much. Although I do like these herb scent makers. They seem to really enjoy them from when I've used them. I'm thinking we're going to add a few of these herb scent makers right along the glass so the guests can easily see them when the tortoises go smell them. I think that works well. Hopefully they won't get stressed, and we can add a sprinkler by their pond. This will keep them cool. Maybe the heater will get too much for them sometimes, and we'll give them an ice ball there just in case. Like I just said, turtles typically like to burrow instead of having hay, but I don't think they can do that in this game. If I'm wrong, I'll find out the hard way. For now, we'll just give them a bed of straw. I know these things can eat a lot, too, so we'll give them an actual food trough. Normally, animals don't need these if they're herbivorous, because they can just graze. But turtles... I don't know. I don't think turtles just eat grass. I'm pretty sure they need fruit and vegetables. Where's a good spot for this? Maybe right in front of this glass. I'm thinking the animals are going to get stressed if we do this. We'll have to add foliage later. Certain species of animals are prone to getting stressed. I think... Yep, tortoises are included because they're currently stressed right now. The easiest way to get around this is by using one-way glass, plants, or anything that breaks up the animal's view so they can have the illusion of having privacy. Technically right now their plant coverage is acceptable, and they like it. We'll just need to add more. We'll give them trees, bushes, rocks, and a lot of things to hide behind so they're not stressed all the time. Because if the animals are stressed, that's what brings the protesters, and that's what makes me stressed. Dealing with animals that are prone to stress can be pretty challenging. The easiest way to do it is by putting leaves and foliage exactly where the guests can view them. This way the tortoises will be more comfortable because they won't always be able to see the guest. Tortoises are pretty short, so they have to look up really high to see guests, while guests can just look down and see them. So if there's a bush in front of them, the guest might be able to see over it, but the tortoises won't. Tortoises are really easy to handle their stress. It gets tougher when you have to deal with a giraffe that can see 40 feet over a tree. I didn't think this would be enough, however, so I made their cave slightly larger, and then I added walls on the outside so they can get behind it and be completely out of guest view, if the plant trick doesn't always work. This might be one of my favorite decorated exhibits. All of the plants look really natural, and I like their cave a lot. Hopefully they'll be able to breed and have a lot of tortoise babies. We can sell them for conservation credits. Tortoises live a really long time, so just two of them can be extremely profitable. Hopefully they enjoy their new home. And the exhibit is about done. Now what's wrong? It looks like our tapers are stressed out again. Wait, no. What's wrong? Temperature. Oh, it's snowing again in April, of course. Okay, we've done this before, this shouldn't be that difficult to change. I think we put heaters in every single exhibit last time. Our water temperature regulator is working, so there's no reason our animals should be as bad as they were last time. I'm sure it's still not exactly perfect, 
See, we have some snow over here. That'll be an easy fix. I think the worst of the winters has already passed. But their temperature and terrain is still dropping, so I think we need to add a couple more heaters and maybe a few more water temperature regulators in areas where we missed last time. Shouldn't be very hard, though. Yeah, it looks like our tortoises are doing fine. If our cold-blooded animals are doing fine in the winter, I don't know why our tapers are so fussy. I do remember that our tapers are a little bit overcrowded. They're solitary animals, and we have four of them in there, including a baby. So maybe that's the problem. But it looks like our tortoises have adjusted to their new home. Check them out. Slow and steady does win the race. The last thing I wanted to do before we end today's episode is just make a few cute little details that'll really spice up the area. In order to do this, I'm just going to add some letters and words, and little cutouts of our animals. That way, guests will be able to see exactly what they're getting into, and roughly know what'll be there. When you walk into the Columbus Zoo, one of the areas you might find is the Congo Expedition. And if you know anything about the Congo in real life, you'll know this is where you're probably going to find gorillas, okapis, bonobos, and a lot of African jungle animals. If you walk into the Congo Expedition, you're not going to expect to find manatees in there. This way, the guests will know exactly what they're going into if they see the word Amazon. It just dawned on me that we didn't put education around our tortoise exhibit. That's a rookie mistake right there. I think we're going to name this first area the Amazon Adventure. We'll make a more official sign later, but for now we have each of the words on a different rock. We'll add in this picture of the new world, too. That way, guests will know exactly what's over on this branch of the zoo, because North America is going to be next. The last thing that we're going to do today is try and get some conservation credits. This is every single animal we have in the zoo, and as you can see, our capybaras have been busy, to say the least. There's like 13 of them now, maybe 14. The stipulation for releasing animals into the wild is they have to have matured and been born into your zoo. You can't just buy an animal from the marketplace and release it, basically transferring money for conservation credits. You have to raise the animals yourself and keep them well fed and safe. That being said, we have a few flamingos, we can get rid of the Penelope clone, it looks like our caimans aren't ready yet, but we have a lot of capybaras. We can sell these guys for a great amount of conservation credits. The other thing you can do from this screen is look at what animals you have and put contraceptives on them if you don't want them to breed anymore. For example, if you look at our tapers, we have plenty of them and they're solitary animals, so they don't like being crowded. We could put a contraceptive on the males so they can't breed anymore. But I don't think we're going to need to do that yet. Our tapers are almost all grown up, and we might make them another exhibit later. I'm still unsure about that. We'll see how they keep acting around the cappies. But since we're getting rid of some cappies, hopefully some more space and hard shelter space should open up for them. Obviously we're not going to get rid of any of our gold star animals, or even a silver or bronze. For now we're just getting rid of the ones we don't need that don't bring a whole lot of guests. I'm sure they'll thrive in the wild. They haven't been in this zoo for very long, and they've done extremely well health-wise while they've been here. We'll also make sure all of their food grades are as high as they can go. You unlock higher graded food by researching. It costs a little bit more, but it keeps them well fed for longer, easing some work off of our keepers. And we'll rename our tortoise exhibit while we're here. I think that's going to do it for our Amazon area though. We'll start a new section in the next episode. Hope to see you then. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to watch it. Kingpin out.